I recently had a conversation with JMD Apologetics 101, also known as John Dunphy. It was strictly a conversation and not a debate. It was actually a pleasant chat, and I recommend you all check it out. The link to that video is in the description box below. But in the chat room of that live stream, a guy named Gordon was in there pretty much disagreeing with everything I said. I paid him no attention though, but I decided to check out his channel after the live stream concluded. And lo and behold, <laughs> I now have new material for a video. With that said, here we go. People got a really bad habit of uh, putting themselves against God. On those people uh, put themselves up against a 30-foot drop. <laughs> See how that works out for them. God's the God of 30-foot drops. You set yourself up and you criticize his judgments, you criticize his actions, you criticize his virtues, you criticize everything about him. And you do it so brazen. So obviously, this guy, Gordon, doesn't like it when an atheist like myself criticizes God's actions or his virtues in the Bible. And well, that's definitely true of me. You got me there. Here's a list of things I criticize God for. Commanding women to marry their rapist. Sending delusions so people will believe lies. Killing 99% of his creation giving us free will and then punishing us for practicing it, giving us free will and then hardening our hearts so we can't have free will, creating evil, telling us to love our enemies yet casting his enemies into never-ending torment, sending wild animals to kill kids just because one of his prophets was a snowflake and couldn't handle being called baldy. <laughs> like, that's a real thing. It's in the Bible. Telling us to have faith when there is zero reasons to have faith. Demanding we kill innocent animals so he could forgive us of our supposed sins. And yes, I know, Christians are not commanded to practice those barbaric rituals anymore, but the fact remains, he did at one time, for a long time, command us to kill animals because I guess that's the only way he would forgive <laughs> people in ancient times? <laughs> Makes no sense. And also, I think it's sadistic and cruel for God to create souls that he knows in advance will burn forever, yet make them anyway. I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. You're supposed to catch a line in that scenario. You think God's gonna throw you a bone? Look around. Historically. Every day. Currently. You expect God to throw you a bone? Bone coming. He's not an ass kisser. He's not gonna give a hand to people he doesn't like. If I understand you right, if an atheist calls out to God for a sign, God won't answer that plea because he doesn't like the person? I mean, don't get me wrong, when I read the Bible, it's very clear God doesn't like people. Which is just another reason I think he's kind of a dick. He kicks ass. He kicks ass. You're right about that. He wiped out villages and entire towns. So I agree with you here. God does indeed kick ass. So naturally, I'm glad he's a work of fiction. If you contribute the time to get familiar with why you like God, because you spend so much time getting familiar with why you don't like him, and he spites you for that. God tells us to turn the other cheek, meanwhile he smites people who don't like him? <laughs> well, I guess that's Christian logic 101. People like to say, oh, but I only shit in the water and sponsor mammon and I, I'm lazy and I disrespect God's law and I dissuade people from following it and I promote bullshit. But you know what, it's actually significantly more than that. Like we said before, God is constantly enduring the flames of hell. And he doesn't give a shit if you do, because he doesn't like you, because you give him no reason to. The fact that you exist isn't particularly a good reason to like you, except for the fact that the reason why he sends you to hell is because he still wants you to exist. So God sends people to hell to endure everlasting agony because he still wants them to exist? Come on now, you have to admit, that makes him worse than anyone in history. In Hitler's case, he was a genocidal maniac. He commanded his people to kill and torture many other people. But God? He kills people and then makes them suffer for eternity. Based on that alone, God is actually worse than Hitler. And thank God that God doesn't exist. First of all, it's about time that you submit. 
And second of all, if you didn't exist, you could never come to heaven. But it doesn't matter if you spend billions of eternities burning in hell. Ah, oh, you still got a chance. Wait a second, I'm confused. Are you saying that people burning in hell still have a chance to go to heaven? Is that what you're saying? Doesn't that go against what the Bible actually teaches? Gordon, listen, if you see this video, please clarify. Because in the words of Q from Impractical Jokers, Tis confusion! <laughs> God's not your friend, if you're not his. God would be a terrible friend, because as we see in the Bible, he demands us to kiss his ass all the time, or else he'll destroy us at best, or send us to the lake of fire at worst. I don't know about you, <laughs> but that's a friendship I can live without. So pull your head from your ass, because you think God can take your discrimination. Everyone else can just be reborn. They can go to hell too. Fuck them. And they can come back. Well, guess what? The planet can't take it. The planet's dying. And God has no intent on recreating it. Okay, I'm not really sure what your last point was, but as far as the planet being destroyed goes, there are Christians who read the Bible and say the world will be destroyed. Then there are Christians who read the Bible and say that the world will be renewed. As in, not really destroyed, but cleansed. As per usual, the Bible is a buffet of many different doctrines and multiple choice, so you can pick and choose whatever doctrine floats your boat. I guess the all-knowing, all-powerful wizard, I mean God, couldn't make it clear enough for his followers to understand. Anyway, listen dude, you sound bitter. Maybe take some time to meditate or something. And even though my viewers are smart enough to know this, I feel like I better say it anyway. I don't believe in God, so when I speak of God's horrible actions and his atrocious moral laws, I'm speaking about them in the same way I talk about fictional characters in movies or books. For example, I know Darth Vader doesn't exist, but I can criticize his actions while still acknowledging that he's a work of fiction. I actually have a video about that titled, Why Are Atheists So Angry? And I recommend all you lovely people check it out. Anyway, that's all for today. Until next time, take care.